I actually accepted a, an outside sales position, business to business with a, a company by the name of Spot On as well. And they sell POS systems and credit card processing. One thing that I've learned through this process is that you have to be able to think outside of the box and change direction um, and be creative. And that's one thing with Sean losing, or like not losing his job, Sean leaving his job, right? It's important that we are taking care of ourselves from that end of the spectrum as far as financially. Cool. So eventually the, it, it will be to, um, you know, it will be for me to leave United Healthcare, and then I would do the spot on in addition to running our business as well. So they're two kind of they're two businesses kind of wrapped, you know, to get working together. So, um, so if you know of anybody that needs uh, a POS system or credit card processing, please feel free to send them my way because I can help them. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Referrals accepted always, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And in fact, if anybody, since I since I have the floor, if anybody can anybody recommend? I was looking at also joining, possibly a BNI group in addition to the Florida Incubator. Obviously, this is my favorite group, so I will continue to come here on Thursdays. But I was also looking to do some other networking. Would you suggest a Toastmasters and a BNI group? Or is there better groups out there that are um, more of what for? I'm looking for? Yeah. What are you looking for? Go back to go back to the messaging um, video that they posted that I did a couple of weeks ago and look at that. Who's your okay. audience? Where do they hang out? Who do you need to get? To that'll define and help you to say, here's who I'm trying to talk to, and here's where they hang out. Business the owners is are, who yeah, I need to talk to. Are, right. Okay, so that, that would not be Toastmasters then. Okay. okay. Um, Toastmasters are people who want to learn how to be better at public speaking. speaking. Right. You know, whether okay. that's for public speaking or even in their job, you know, right? Sure. Okay. Um, but that, yeah, if you're looking for business owners who need credit card processing, I know lots of um, zero cost networking or groups. Okay. Okay. That you could start with. BNI is kind of expensive to start with unless right. you really right. like them. Right. Um, but I can, we could talk later. I could turn you on to about 10 different networking groups I was in. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Give me a text me or call me or something. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, morning. Um, I was just listening, um, and um, I just, like two days ago, got an email from Lisa Boyd, who used to be part of the incubator. Uh -huh. And her email was about uh, a Toastmasters group that was... Um, going to start up online. Um, again, I don't know that that's what you would need, but if that's something you want to test out, um, I'd be happy to just forward that email to you so you can explore it a little bit or, or the link or something like that. Super. That, that would be great. <clears throat> Do you want me nope, to put knowing, my... Oh, knowing you well, Renee. Say that okay. again. And understanding Toastmasters, you don't, if you wanted to hone that skill, you could do it, okay? But you're not petrified to talk in front of a group of people or talk to people. So no, Toastmasters, no. you know, you could lead a Toastmasters group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah. yeah, it doesn't sound maybe like that's really what you're, you're needing, but okay. if, if you do want it, um, just, you know, let me know and I'll find a way to get you in touch with them. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Folks, it seems like we've already started uh, our challenge roundtable this morning yeah. because <laughs> that is what we are doing today. Uh, 
particularly based upon the feedback uh, that you all gave gave us last week. So uh, right on with that. So let's see. I'm going to have to bug out early today because I got a I have some legal paperwork I got to sign before I leave Tarpon Springs, and I got to head down to the chamber because we're continuing to meet with uh, Chamber and City of Dunedin business owners. So if anybody needs to meet with us or knows businesses are struggling, um, Jennifer and I will be meeting with people all day today and next Thursday uh, at the Dunedin Chamber to help them figure out what relief do they still qualify for that's out there, which everybody needs to know. Um, the SBA reopened the EIDL loan to everyone. So if you were locked out before, you know, they had it closed for a while where you had to be in an agriculture industry. They, they removed that restriction. So that EIDL loan is, is available at this time now, and you can apply for that if you haven't already. Do you Could you, know, oh. you refresh specifically what that's for? That's the loan through the, that is a loan that is available through the Small Business Administration. You fill out the application online and it is a loan that you pay back over like a 30 year period or something or another like that. You know, you got to have your profit and loss statement for your business for the last two years and you got to show that, you know, the crisis actually had an impact on your revenue for the year and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, if you get approved by the SBA, then, you know. Does that require that you have employees? No. Okay. And is it Pinellas only or is it statewide? It's national. That's national. through the SBA oh, nationally. Small business. Okay. Through D DC office. Do you know what the interest rate is? Huh? Do you know what the interest rate is? One percent. One percent. No, that was that's a PPP loan. Uh, it's I between three. I think it's between three and a half and four set four point seven five. I think that's what it is. I don't know because I got accept. I got um, I got two SBA loans. You know, I did the application twice, so now I've got two. Um, I was approved for both, but I'm not filling out the remaining stuff for the second one because that one came later. Um, and I, I thought when I was reading my paperwork, it was a 1%, but I may be reading that wrong. So I'll go back and look at it because it looked like a really low, and I was like, oh, well, I can handle that, so. Yeah, so do you, do you know how many of those you can get a year? Because if you have this, you declare this as your economic impact disaster, the coronavirus, and then the big hurricane comes, and you get another one later on in the year, or you limited to one a year. I'm not sure about that. That's a Jennifer question. Jen okay. would know that for sure. I can uh, check that out though, Carl, and we'll, uh, I'll send it to Michael and Evelyn so they can distribute it. I just want to know when to pick my disaster, you know? Yeah, but really. It, but it's I one get year. It. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't didn't, know. They yeah. didn't give me a hand when Irma came through and my business was disrupted and I went through that whole process then. So, um, so it was, I was surprised that they did it this time around, but of course it's been, Two years, I guess. So Three years, yeah. maybe maybe yeah. that was the first loan, and this one was the second one for you. Got the one for Irma, and then one for uh. I didn't get one for Irma. They were like, "Sorry, it just, it just arrived." No, no, it just arrived. Right. It doesn't apply. What you, what you have to understand is because of the pandemic, okay, and the CARES Act. The CARES Act modified the way that the EIDL loan actually operated in the past. Okay. So under normal, con under normal circumstances, you know, sole proprietors and stuff like that usually can't apply for that stuff, but they opened it up because they understood everybody was affected by this thing and they needed to get money to everybody, not just, you know, people that were, you know, S corps or corporations and filing taxes that way and everything else. So that may have been part of the reason why that came through that way for you, so. That's probably fine. Well, I'm surprised that they didn't connect the two because um, the only difference was an email address at the time because I, I, had, I had originally applied for an SBA loan 
with that one email address. So I kind of used it again. And then I applied with my own business one, just not even thinking about it, but they ended up sending me two, you're accepted. And I don't want two loans. So. I don't even want one loan actually. Uh, so I got accepted too, but I decided I'm not going to fill out the stuff for the loan. Sure. All right. So let's start our challenge round. Uh, introduce your business and the challenges that are facing your business and people will chime in with whatever support they may have to offer. I, I suggest that Dino go first because he has to leave early. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> I don't have any challenges, right? You're uh, just looking so, for people that have challenges. No, actually, my, my challenges are good challenges. So all of a sudden, things have begun to kind of percolate, it looks like, and that sort of thing. So um, I guess, unfortunately, she's not here this week. I want to throw out a shout out of a thank you to Kathy because, you know, Kathy um, um, brought up some things the week that I presented it or whatever. And then she and I actually had a conversation already scheduled for afterwards and she brought some things up. And I, I, wanna, I wanna also, cause this was something that I learned about myself through that process actually that day. Um, and I want everybody to understand that. I, I, I tend to get defensive about things, okay? And I understand, and it's not that if, 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 if anyone is uh, a supporter of and a lover of change, it is me, okay? And that's why I can't understand sometimes while, you know, people will say, well, you get, you, you know, don't get defensive, don't get, and it's, it's a natural reaction. And the reason for that natural reaction is because of the way that I was raised. I was attacked all the time. There was nothing I could ever do that was right or correct in my father's eyes. And that continues even to this day. I've completely separated myself from any kind of contact with him or anything else at this point. Um, and um, because when he's got you down on the mat, he's putting his knee on your throat and he ain't letting you up. And that is, you know, and so I have a tendency when people are, giving me negative feedback and that sort of thing. I realized that afterwards that I was, you know, because uh, Kathy kept bringing up the fact that she was, you know, you know, well, no, and she was trying to position it. And I just realized she was reacting, trying to diffuse what it was that, you know, I, I was doing just because it was an automatic tape that was playing in my head, not that, you know, I was disagreeing with what it was that she said. And as a result of that, I think I've kind of made a small, a, a slight pivot with what it was that I've been doing and approaching things in a different way. Um, so a lot of you have been hearing me talk about, you know, all this online training stuff that we were going to do and everything else. And I've shifted the focus. We're not, we're still going to use the online platform, but I'm not going to try and put all the programs together and everything else. We're going to only promote the one-on-one -on -one coaching and uh, peer group settings that would be more like what we'll do probably for FBII here. Um, and when we deliver those lessons in that kind of a group, then we'll record those. And that'll become the content and we'll build the do-it-yourself stuff on the backside. Makes it much easier for me to talk about the stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it helps me to focus my messaging and that sort of thing. Um, and it doesn't take as many coaching deals to close to make what I need to get to that break-even point that I want to be at, you know, in order to that I talk about all the time to lift me to the next level and that sort of thing. So, um, so I guess I was having the challenge before and I wanted to share that through this group and the discussions with this group, I've actually put some of what I got into practice at this point. It's actually moving forward. I have three or four people that are evaluating coming on board 
you know, coaching wise that I hadn't even thought about offering that to them before, but it fit perfectly with what it was that they were looking for. So it almost is like things are getting better as a result of challenges that this group helped me with. So that's what you know, I got. To Dina, help me understand better what the shift in your business is. So the shift in the business, Michael, is to provide. So I was trying to build all of this stuff as online e-learning right. training and that sort of thing. That yeah. takes forever to do that. So the mm -hmm. shift basically is I, that learning already exists. I could do it right now with you right here. Right. With, the slide decks are all there and everything else. It's putting all the videos and all the other kind of stuff together that needs to go along with that to put it online. So the shift is if I get one-on-one -on -one coaching or if I get people in a group like this that want to meet on a regular basis, that are willing to pay the price that it costs in order to do that, then We'll start putting people through those programs that way and recording those sessions. Take those recordings, strip all the stuff that doesn't need to be uh, in there, okay. and that becomes the online, and we'll build it over time. We'll build the online do-it-yourself stuff, and then we'll release that later. So that's the shift. If that and what sense. you will be offering will be much more real than... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, cool. And it allows us, the problem has always been in making that shift, how do I replace it? So I'm having to do two things at one time because I'm having to continue to coach while we're building everything and trying to promote and get people in to make that shift. Doing it the other way allows me to continue to do that as we have time to put the do-it-yourself stuff online and begin to promote that. People can begin to come in there, but the revenue is already covered on the other side. That just becomes a, an additional revenue stream on what it is that we're already doing. So um, like I said, it, somebody challenging me, you know, mainly Kathy Norris in this chain that I want everybody to know that, you know, I mean, she was the one, you know, that I had that aha moment from the discussions that I had with her and how she challenged me here, you know, and it wasn't a challenge round, but she was challenging. Wasn't she, Renee? <laughs> well, 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 that's something that this group is absolutely is, can be very useful for to challenge your own mindset. Mindset, yep. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I, I'd like to just uh, share a couple things. First of all, I really do understand how that works where the resistance comes up. Yep. And, and, but now you've, since you know that, I don't maybe you've known it for a long time, it it now becomes a, a key uh, a key for you because as soon as you feel the resistance come up, right. then you can you can say, oh, something is happening here that I need to listen to, right. and um, so it it instead of being a problem, it becomes a spark, yep, and a messenger. So I. I applaud you for being so aware and being able to use it the way that you used it. Um, the you. other thing I wanted to mention, since we're doing referrals here, um, a plug for someone you know already, Dara, my daughter, uh -huh. um, her expertise is in getting, getting, uh, presentations um, online like that right so I don't know if you um, are looking for any input from somebody who does that or if you already have that arranged but well, I have, um, yeah, I, I've got plenty of stuff the, the the feedback that I got basically from Kathy was in the format that it's in currently people aren't going to sit and watch that it's it's too long it's too involved it's you know I mean yeah I've done that stuff for years, I mean, I've had online training. Okay. What she what she does is can she can converts it. She okay. She converts. She can take all of that and convert it into what you're looking for. But if you already know what you're doing with that, I just didn't know if you knew that. I mean, you know her. I yeah. didn't know if you knew that was her area no, I didn't of expertise. Know that was part of so. what she did for sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. Joan. Uh, 
that could be a service that I could use. Yeah, I was going to say Michael could use it. Right, if you can explain it a little bit more. Um, I'm not the best person to do that. I'm not really good at, uh, she's, she's so good at what she does and she, and it's, it, she has a, a wide range of expertise and training. Joan, so connect, connect it, Dora with. It Mike. would be, be best if, <laughs> if the two of you talked and um, I, I'd be happy to, Dara actually she's used to come. Me. Yeah. She used to come to, to the incubator and um, uh, she's, she's been tied up with some clients and now would be a good chance to, for her to have some time because she's in between, she's almost in between clients. So Joan put her um, e e mail in the chat for us. Uh, okay. Thank you. I'm going to. I'm going to have to look. I'm on my phone, so I'm going to have to look it up and and switch over. That's okay. It's okay. She's got a couple of different emails, and I'm sure. not sure which which one she uses um, for business. So let me let me take a look. Great. Thank you, Dino. Anything else that you are challenged with? No, not unless anybody else wants to chime in. Everybody wanted. Uh... Wanted, wanted to uh, provide me some feedback, and I appreciate yeah. that. I, I, yeah, all good why stuff. Are, why are you in an empty boardroom? You're supposed to have a filled boardroom. Uh, my background. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you created that background last, last week. I did. Okay, so you need to go find another picture, because you did that in all of 30 oh seconds. Oh, my gosh. So find one that's filled. She, Evelyn is correct. Absolutely. Actually, if I got to do something in the background, then I'm going to go start editing. I was editing video before we started, so yeah. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how is your working out in exercise going? The what? Exercising. Uh, exercise? I haven't been walking quite as much as I have, um, but it seems like my... Uh, Seems like my my foot started acting up, my ankle started acting up. So, um, but I but I I'm I'm getting plenty. Uh, I've got there's plenty of time to do it, so I got to get back to doing whatever I can. So, super. Thanks for asking, though. Yeah. Uh, final question: uh, the chamber boardroom. Are folks staying six feet apart there, or what is the story there? Yep, and I'm wearing my mask. Uh huh. We'll come in. Okay. So, I mean, we're not having everybody. I mean, it's one on. It's it. You, there's actually time slots, so we have one or two people that come in at a time. That's it. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So we got that big old boardroom, and there's right. maybe four of us in in that big old boardroom. So. Plenty of room there. Okay. Yep. Super. Thanks, Dino. Appreciate sure. it. Who's next? What's your business and what challenges are you facing today? Everybody's running. You're asking really? for volunteers. Everybody's <laughs> running. Well, soon I'll call on somebody. <laughs> I'm not running. Where are you running to? There <laughs> you go. Hello, Santa Claus. Uh, actually, I trimmed it up this morning. Didn't I? I thought it looked a little better. Well, it looks fine. You know, you just look kind of like Santa Claus. That's all. <laughs> well, that's good. At least I'll have a job come December, huh? A and go. I wasn't running. I was just getting more water, but that was hysterical, uh, you know. <laughs> so, Dick, what kind of challenges are, uh, well, tell us about your business and what kind of challenges this group might support you in. Well, our business is really helping people help themselves get to where they want to go. And what we're finding is right now is people are kind of stuck. And the problem with that is, is that what we can offer them, quite frankly, I'm going to be blunt, they can't afford. And that's where it really runs down into a situation here where we live in Pinellas County. Uh, there are so many uh, different people who call themselves coaches. Um, I've kind of changed that to I'm, I'm a navigator. 
And I like the word navigator because I really can help people navigate through those situations in which they're in. So if their business is not well motivated to take and get up and get going every morning, that's something we can work on. But a challenge that I'm having is, is really getting people to wake up and realize that now is the time to get going. And instead of just sitting back to wait, well, let's get to the new normal. Well, okay, gang, there, there is no such thing as the new normal. Every day you wake up is your normal day. So knowing how to respond to that, I believe is, is the key. But I think that's what people struggle with. And getting people to understand that and getting them to get motivated, boy, it's, it's a tough, tough nut to crack in, in, in right now where we're at. So I'd say if I had any kind of that, you know, uh, that would be it. As far as my other world goes, we're still writing every day. We're still producing every day. We're still doing all those things here. Um, and we're getting a fairly decent turnaround on everything. But uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, like I've told another coach, nav the navigator yesterday, if you want to be successful, you can't live here. So that's, that's pretty much where we're at there. Uh, Rob and I have been here our whole lives, so I don't think we're going anywhere. <laughs> but it's frustrating sometimes when all your clients are out of state in another place and they're not in your own backyard. That, that's frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in terms of the first challenge that you mentioned, how do you get folks to move? <laughs> what I found useful is to keep people talking until they start talking about their pain points. That's it. Find the pain. Yeah. You know, find the pain and uh, find a solution. There it is. Right. Yeah. So up the thoughts. Yeah, Dick, uh, thank you so much for articulating my problems so well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome to my world. No. Really, and the one piece that I that I did notice was missing was uh, meet people where they're at. Yeah, yeah. You know, even if they're not ready now, maybe then you know they'll they'll when they when they do wake up, they'll they'll think of you. You know. Yeah, and and that's what all we've been doing. We've been keeping the communication lines open, keeping the you know newsletters happening, doing you know the the video links every day. Um, you just you just have to keep going and not give up i'm i'm pretty persistent <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cowboy better be yeah. well you know but the wood shop's been working you know i've got a lot of if you want a birdhouse by golly i got a maid um <laughs> mm -hmm. so the big question that you actually are raising dick is how do you help people get unstuck and the floor is certainly open to thoughts about that. How do you help people get unstuck? Because that's when they actually need us most. Well, I, ha I have to say that there's a certain element of trust that gets built up, like what Dick's doing and reaching out and continuing to show up. Um, yeah. You know, one of, one of the challenges that I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I, I almost want to talk later about, you know, some of the things that I'm seeing happening with the people that I care about in my life and how to navigate that too. Um, you know, the, the massage center is an example. I, I kept reminding Heather who owns the massage center, you know, like send out an email, let people know that you're still there. Like we we're looking at a world where half of the world is shut down right now still. And some businesses are not going to come back and it's kind of helpful to know that you're there. You know, she waited until, the week after they opened and she's now frantic to get business to start sending emails, you know, and I think staying in the forefront of that is important yeah. um, to, to build that trust with people and to let them know, you know, that you're here for them because even if they're stuck, eventually they're going to say, well, I do know this guy. I, I do know this woman who, and. Yeah. And I think that, that that's, a lot of it is, is it, I think that we've been tied down for so long. I know that Robin and I started this thing in January. Um, so 
we've been here a long time. And it's, it's, you get kind of cloistered, you know. It's, it's good to look within and kind of and do some research and, you know, do those self, self things. But I, I believe that you have to keep motivated yourself. And, and that's a hard thing to do, especially for a coach or navigator, whatever you want to call yourself. All of us who are in business for ourselves, to keep motivated ourselves to keep going is tough. And that's where I believe that the communications like what we're having here, talking to different, you know, each other and saying, well, gee, you know, it was just really hard to get out of bed this morning. Um, I think that's really important to, 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 to admit that. But that's what Could Paul I, was saying. You have to admit it nice, first. It's nice yes. to know that there's other people in the same boat that you are, right? Amen to that, that for sure. Got, you got to mention – the only way you can do that is stay connected. I mean, if you isolate yourself, then the only point of reference that you have is your own. And, you know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, one, one of the things that I find helps with that mm -hmm. is when you've made a bunch of commitments for yourself. <laughs> um, Paul, say more about that. <laughs> say more about that. Um, I mean, I am committed to... Uh, people get an email automatically from a system every three days from me, which means that I have to keep writing emails at the back end of that funnel so that yep. they can keep getting them. I'm, I'm obligated, I feel, to do that. Not obligated, I'm committed. I'm dedicated to doing that. Dedicated is okay? better than committed. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yes. But, you know, it's, it's uh, what else? I mean, there's a whole bunch of content that I know I need to do mm -hmm. every week. So that's, it's, it's just, it needs to get done. And that's, so why do I get out of bed? Cause I got to get that done. Okay. And I want to get that done because I enjoy doing it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think that is an important point. If it's something that you enjoy doing, that is a source of, well, I mean, that's actually a very powerful source of motivation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's when you do, it's when you're doing something that you do not enjoy, uh, such as marketing and selling and all that stuff, you know, that, that it gets difficult to motivate oneself. Um, yes and no. <laughs> if, if we're doing, because I don't like the marketing. I mean, I just spent probably about four hours yesterday, you know, uh, uh, copying into a text, copying this text into the body of the text, copying the email over to the email, send, send, next name, right? And just like mechanical, the, the your machine. Point is. My point is, as much as I don't like doing it, the reason I'm doing it, the purpose I'm doing it is a passion. It's, you know, they say, what would you do if, if, you, if they weren't gonna pay you, right? And so the passion's there, and I'll do the monotonous stuff because the passion's there. Okay. So then there's enjoyment, then there's passion for what you're doing. Two good ways to not get stuck. Yes. Yes. There's a, uh, nice, my a, a gentleman who I really follow, like to follow, and, and he talks about his daily five, and I've put it into my world years ago. It's the five things you do every single day, no matter what. And those are the five things that really drive you and your company forward. And for me, that's what keeps me motivated. And I get up every morning, I look at my daily file. Okay, this is what we got to do. And, and <clears throat> even though some of them have become rote, like you're talking about, Paul, you know, you cut and paste and make, you know, it's still a thing that you're doing. And I think that that staying busy is a big piece. You know, I get frustrated, I go out to the wood shop and I turn on the saws, you know, don't come out there and bother me, the saws are on. But the thing is, is <clears throat> that's when I get my best ideas and that's when I get those best offer little, little things. So out in the shop is this pad of paper that's gets full of notes, you know, and people go, I thought you were building something. Well, well I, I, I am, but you are. I'll have, have to go take a shower and then type it up. You know, uh, so I think that's that's really what you're talking about. It's, yes, it's staying motivated. All right, Renee, what's this mean? 
Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm listening. That's my listening. But you know, I have to say, I was going to say from a consumer standpoint, mm -hmm. um, and you talked about people not wanting to spend the money. Um, there is a fear for that. Um, like right now we have coaching going on and there is a fear for me of spending that money because I'm worried mm -hmm. that, that, because we're, we're looking at buying a business and we, we have, a, and I can talk about that when I do my little spiel, but we're looking at buying a business and my worry is that something's going to fall through and now that money is no longer within my cash flow. So well, is, is the person who is directing you, do they kind of give you some thought process of having a, a treasure, treasure chest? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, so, that's but there is, there is still that fear though of like, Oh, I've got to pay this invoice. Right. And I know that I'm getting good quality. Mm -hmm. Um, but there just from, from a consumer perspective, there's fear there. And oh, if you yeah. can figure out what their fear is and omit the fear, then I think <laughs> you'll be successful with what well, you want to do. And I always, you know, look at people's budget too. You know, I'm in a different age and stage than, than some. So when I'm looking at someone's business like that, my business, you know, if I, if I, if I don't work every day, it's not a terrible thing. But my inner person says, Dick, you need to get up and go to work every day. So that's what I do. But when I'm, I'm talking to someone like you, having that treasure chest of one to two years of, of money, Mm -hmm. It's super important when you start your own company. Yeah. Um, I've, I've built several and the first couple didn't do real well because I didn't follow my own instructions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I, all of us are out there start our own companies who, who are coaches know that it has happened. Mm -hmm. And once you really start putting that time in, listen to people like Dino, Paul and myself and Michael and you, and you start thinking to yourself, well, gee, they're saying one to two years of treasure chest. Man, that's a big chunk of money. Yeah. Well, it is, but then you're not worried about all those little things. See, here's the difference. And Renee, we, we, we can talk offline. I mean, worry, mm -hmm. all worry isn't real. No. Right. Exactly. All fear is based in a lie, right? Now, right. Now, being right. concerned is a different thing. Okay. Right. So that's a, that's a, if you, if, what Paul's trying to do is get you to look, think, change those words and it changes your mind. Right. And it really does. It really, it does. really does. And, and that's where I had to say, you know, because I was, you know, um, I had some decisions to make last night and it was just kind of like, this is all going to work out. Everything's going to go great. And my coach is going to be a huge process of my success. Right. So, and, and that's what I replaced, but, but I wanted to share that with you. So you kind of knew where the consumer may be coming from, you yeah. know, especially when they're jumping into a, a big commitment or not for us, it's a big commitment, but for, you I've know, been for, doing others, it for about 30 years. So I understand. Yeah. Part. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. different for, for all of us in this line of work. It's different than it was 30 years ago, sure. 30 years ago. Uh, business people understood what a coach counselor could do for them and their company. And then we kind of got a bad name for ourselves. So there were some people who polluted the, polluted the word and, and that brought more people into that fear zone. Okay. And we've, we've all been trying to, to jump over that hurdle. Uh, you know, when, when I'm in San Francisco, there's not that big hurdle. When we're in Oklahoma, there's even on that big cattle ranch in Oklahoma, there's not that big hurdle. But here where we live, there's a big hurdle. So it's fun. Okay. So who's next? <laughs> Evelyn. You're still muted. Thanks. Good morning. Um, I'm trying to 
this might be just a functional thing or I just need to hear what other people are doing. I, I keep toying with different types of organizational tools. I'm, I'm usually very organized, but you know, my life is filled with like all these notes for every conversation that I have. And oh, Dino's shaking his head already. I'm feeling judged. <laughs> I hate, I, hate, I hate it. I hate well, I, I actually thought that was way. impressive. Oh, oh, so, let's, let's go slow yeah, down. Yeah. I won't. Uh oh. What happened to Evelyn? There she is. There she is. Yeah, my phone rang, so everything had to stop. Um, I hate Asana because I have to pay to, to, to get more tools, and it just doesn't let me. And I, my brother in law suggested Trello which I've been playing with. But I'm having a hard time going from, from the paper to the electronic and then back to the, oh, you know, wow. like I keeping track, I love checking things off. That's like one of my favorite. Dino says, time out, you are so judged right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not judging at all. What I'm gonna say is what I'm, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say, Evelyn, is what I hear everybody do when it comes to time management. You're looking for a tool, okay? Wrong approach. You need a process first. The process will dictate the tool that you use, okay? And I've been through all of those things, and the one that I found that I like the most is very inexpensive. It's $79 for their training. Um, it's, it's called totally relaxed organization, TRO. And it's, it's offered by, if you go to priacta.com, I'll, I'll but, type some stuff. Priacta? Priacta. <laughs> priacta.com. So, so it's a process, not a tool. Uh, right. I, 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 I'm not sure what you're saying. Yes. There. Yes. They, they teach you how to organize things and everything else. And I found them by by happenstance really years ago and I've never stopped using them um, because and, and the way that I found them was I've been through all of them I've done I've done um, you know I've, I, I did the Franklin Covey system I used seven habits of highly effective people I use the combination of the both I've used getting things done I've you know all these other offshoots that you know, all of those things are built so that you got to use their tool. Well, when the getting things done with tool didn't work anymore, I went looking for something and I found Priacta. They have a page of every piece of time management or task, you know, project management, whatever you want to call it, anything that people use to organize their to do's and their tasks. And they have a page that has every single product on it that's available out there. And I said, oh, this is cool. So I paid $79 and I think the training is still $79. They don't care what the tool is. They teach you the process that you need to use, okay? And then based off of the electronic tools and paper tools that you use, they say then this is, these are the things that you should use to help you organize all of that stuff. I mean, my inbox, I never have more than a hundred items in my inbox. Why? Because I learn how to organize that stuff so that it doesn't get overwhelming, you know, and put oh. stuff on the, once I understood what it was, then the tool, they picked the tool for me based off. And when I started using it, it's like, ah, oh, this is pretty easy. <laughs> it's like, I got a place to shove all that stuff. You know, it's just following the process more or less. So that's why I offer that up at one. I, you know, You'll, you'll look, if you don't know how you want to organize and work before you go looking for a piece of software, you know, and I did all yeah. through the 90s, this is what my first business was out of the Air Force. Effective Information Solutions was helping companies to evaluate what their real requirements were so that when we went looking for software, we could narrow it down and get the right software. You know, put that name in the chat, please. I will. Yep. Yes, please. And I'll put the well, uh, link and everything. I got to go out and find it. I, I, I know the owner of the business. I have a relationship with him. Um, so if anybody needs any help or anything like that, you know, let me know and I'll connect you with uh, 
he actually has a really good book too. Um, okay. Back to you, Evelyn. So, yep. so I was going to say, that, that, thanks, because I'm curious about that. You know, I keep signing up for workshops and whatnot to try to organize. And the two things that are working well for me is I got a little a time healer system that allows me to just track time. So I just hit a button and it moves to the next thing so I can bill for my time. I think some of the challenge for me, too, is that I have a lot of things going on. that are They're not all one business. They're not all under one umbrella, you know. and What's that, Dick Powell? You're talking at me. I see you. I said that's okay. What's okay? Having a lot, a lot under it that's not under that, one umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, except that currently it's impacting my health and my stress oh, level. Well, that's a different right. ballgame. But right, and it's like I enjoy doing all these things, but it's 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 become too much again. So whenever it gets to be too much, I start looking at what I need to let go, and I can't stop painting. And I can't stop generating money. So then it's like, what, what else do I start doing? And it's, there's, it's, um, and amazingly, you know, when May started, it's like, I just got slammed um, by projects that were on hold because of COVID. That was no yeah. fault of my own. Everybody else was like, okay, we're ready to roll. And I'm just, yeah, it was, it's been interesting. So the, the other piece of that is, and I don't know if anybody else is noticing this in their own businesses too, but there seems to be these really foggy lines about what's going to be appropriate. You know, I go to the dentist's office, they're charging me an extra 10 bucks every time I go in for the PPE materials that they have to buy, which infuriates me because they put masks on before. So how is it any different other than like, now you are telling me you have to throw away every little jacket that you put on. Well, why don't you just wash them? You know, like, I don't get it. And then on the flip side of that, you know, there's all these arguments about, you know, I mean, people mocking me for wearing a mask in the store. And I'm like, come on, people. So I don't know where the, what everybody's come to in regards to, to all of that. My, my sentiment is I'm rather safe than sorry, regardless of, of you know, political affiliation and, uh, and personal perspectives. Um, but it's been hard to navigate, like, when is it really okay for me to go and see my elderly clients and I'm walking in with my mask on because <laughs> I don't want to impact anybody. Yep. Well, and we've done the same thing. Like I'd mentioned earlier when Michael had asked me about, you know, um, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a high risk candidate because of going through the radiation therapy. And so, you know, when I, if I'm out someplace, I got my mask on all the time, not just for me, but for those people around me as well. You know, I mean, yeah. any other thoughts or Evelyn about getting organized? No, but if anybody has any other, you know, I, yeah, I, I put everything on my calendar. I try to structure time on my calendar ahead of time and work around that. So if I know I have this project, I'm going to block some time for that. Um, but, you know, then I'm getting phone calls and people are wanting different projects to get started soon. And I'm like, oh boy, keeping track of all of that has been, I see Caroline. Renee. Do you, do you use OneNote? I don't. It's, um, it, to me, it's like I keep putting things in different places and I'd love to have an easy system. The problem is if I don't have my electronics, I got to put it on paper and then it's moving. I was thinking paper. for a storage, like just maybe about your clients and HubSpot also has a really good CRM that connects your email um, to the CRM where you can build your client list that way. I'm, I'm with you. I absolutely hated Asana, hated it. It was, I was, I, it was, to me, it was so, it, it, it just, it was nonsense to put something in to just have to mark it off. Yes, it's, it's good with keeping track of what did you do prior versus what are you doing now? It just felt like double work. Um, I was thinking OneNote though might be able, because I know you can create different tabs where you can at least put all of your customer information under each tab, yeah. you know, for I each have, of your I've, customers. I have boards. I'm putting together boards on, on Trello for each client. See, Go Renee, ahead. Renee, what you're doing right there, you could do this, you could do that, you can do, see, if you don't have the system, 
Right. Most of these You're right, you know. You're absolutely right. That you can set them up however you do. <clears throat> if you don't have the system defined first, then, yeah. you know. Yeah, you're right. Evelyn. And, and the it, system, it, it, I mean, one, one thing you could do, okay, and this comes from my software background. You know, one thing you can do is you sit down with a piece of paper and say, okay, how, you know, pick, pick one dimension of how you want to organize things. So for you, maybe it's customers, maybe it's projects, maybe it's by, you would rather organize by project instead of customers, but whatever you think might be the best. And then start sketching out a tree. What's underneath what, what connects to what on paper. How would, where would you want to be able to put stuff? What do you have to store, all right? If it doesn't work on paper, it's not going to work in the software. You'll have invested so many right. hours in the software. Get it to work on paper. Then find a piece of software who can replicate right. that. But even, but I even, hate paper. I hate even, paper. But even I love paper. That, I play with it all the time. I, but not for Evelyn. Canvas. Do it on Evelyn, Evelyn, yes, Evelyn this yes. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yeah spend the money and take yeah. the TRO uh -huh. because what basically what they say is everything that comes in your world, you have to triage it first. And so they give you a process that you can quickly triage everything. And I mean, I mean, to, to, to organize my day every day takes me 30 seconds. So can I listen to it on my 10 yes. hour drive up to North Carolina? Oh, uh, I don't, I will, I, well, I don't, I don't know if they got the, it, it's online training. I don't know if they have an audio version of it now yet or not. So it's, I can't click and drive, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. No, it won't work. You're going to have to read it, I think, if it's still in the same format as when I took it. See, I the reason I like it is we always fall out of habits. I mean, right, Dick? You, Dick will be all over this. I mean, yes. so what I like about this is one of the things is they have a 21-day challenge to try and build the habit with you. Right. right. So when you go through that, so on day one, the first thing when you go through that is go out six months from now and put this on your calendar to do this again. So every six months when you fall out and start falling out of the habit, guess what? The training pops up on my calendar again and I go through the training every six months automatically. So... Yeah. It, I, I love it. I love it. I yeah, mean, backdated, okay. backdated calendars work every time. Amen. Amen. Every time. Yep. <laughs> so Dino, does that, that's not just for all your business activities, but it sounds like it, no, it helps no, you with no. your whole life. You, yes. One picture. inbox. You have one inbox and everything funnels into that inbox. Yep. And then you <laughs> apply that triage process. Okay. Which means if, if I can't get to it in less than two minutes, okay, then I got to do something with it. So I put it on my to-do list or if I can't process it right now, I got to process it later because I don't have enough time right now. And I got to spend a little bit more time. Then I need a process folder to put that stuff in. And then I schedule time to process my inbox on a regular basis. Somewhere. And that's a regular part of my day. Cool. Yeah. Super. It, it's very helpful, very helpful in getting, you know, in the paper stuff, you know, I mean, you have a replicated piece of the paper stuff, but you get it into your electronic system at some point. All right. So <laughs> who's next? I got to start making a commission off of these guys. I don't know how many people I've said. Joan. Um, yeah, the, this past week has just been really crazy busy, so I kind of have been spinning my wheels. But um, some other options, you know, I, I mentioned that I'm I'm looking to help define the direction of my business right now, um, and that I'm trying to shift to being um, home home based in terms of not going out to see clients. Um, and uh, Kathy is going to, I'm in the process of putting the writing samples together um, that Kathy said she, she had somebody she could connect me with. But there's a whole other aspect to my business that I think, uh, uh, that I think would 
would work well. It's it's work that I've done before, which has to do with my my healing work, the energy work, and the um, mindfulness methods, and uh, hearing what some people are talking about with their concerns. Uh, these mindfulness methods actually help um, help you uncover uh, pathways and directions that are maybe not readily available right up in your your current thinking mind, but help you find uh, answers. And these are all things that I've done distance work. I've done energy work as distance work. I've done the mindfulness work. Doesn't ha You don't have to be in person. You can do that. Joan, what's your challenge? Over, over the phone. And um, uh, so I, I would really like to include that too. And um, the challenge there is um, I, I think that when you start talking about um, healing work, especially distance work or, or mindfulness work that relates to meditation techniques and so forth, a lot of people glaze over. This is not something that they've ever thought of as being useful. Uh, they tend to be, if not disinterested then um, very skeptical about it and so I I have I've struggled with whether or not to invest my time and energy in that direction um, just because I, it, it seems like difficult uh, a difficult task to get people to even want to hear about it, let alone open to it. So I, I think I'm looking for, I, I've, I'm just, just listening to um, Evelyn, I thought, well, there are places like massage places that are opening up and a lot of people who may have done massage in-person in work before are very nervous about receiving that work as am I, and um, uh, they might be open to, you know, if I were to be able to affiliate with uh, a business like that, they might have people who would be interested in doing, in trying distance work. Um, and uh, I think it was last week, someone com someone's comment was in the presentation, maybe it was Dino, was uh, talking about finding your your audience. That may have been Dick a while ago too. You know, being clear about who your audience is and um, uh, focusing Joan, on that. Joan, yeah. do you believe in what you do? In the work, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I've seen it make a difference in people's lives, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is something that excites you and turns you on. I, yeah, I, I, yes, but I really, when it comes to the business aspect of, I mean, I've had this sole proprietorship in one form or another for thirty years, and um, it's always been word of mouth. The mm -hmm. efforts I made at at advertising ended up yielding nothing mm -hmm. or almost nothing. And so it's always been a client who told a client, who, you know, right. that's how I got people. Right. Well, here's a piece of feedback that you've not used this group to spread by word of mouth. Because I've not heard you talk about how powerful uh, uh, your process is, how excited uh, um, you are about it in this forum, which is about sh sharing what you offer. Am I making sense okay. to you? Um, 
yeah, I thought I, I thought I was supposed to focus on an an issue that I'm concerned about. So I, I didn't know that you wanted me to focus no, no, on no, the no, other. No, no. Okay. What I hear you saying is that you have work that you would like to do, but you are concerned about how to market it. Yes. Yeah, well, so I am responding to that. That one way to market is to, to use this as a setting to share what you do, how powerful it is, and how excited you are about it. I, I, I'm not saying do that right now. Okay. But it's an opportunity that is right here. But it's not something that you have thought you could do here. I, I, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, Please I just... The forum. I, Go on. There's how Sorry. Many, there's how many, use this as a forum. There are how many people that come here on a regular basis. And I don't think... I, I don't really understand what it is that you do that well, Joan. So do a better job of maybe communicating so that we understand what you do. I may, ha I may know people that can help you with that, so. And, and Joan, I'll just add a, a, I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. Sorry for jumping on late. It's good to see everyone. Um, uh, last time I was on, I heard you speak about a passion for writing. So I'm confused. What is it that you really want to do? No, I, uh, maybe it was before you hopped on. I, I'm, I do both. I okay, do both. so you do writing and uh, a mind healing. Healing? Healing, healing. healing. I don't like to call it healing work because I'm absolutely clear that I'm not the one that does the healing. The healing takes, you know, you, you do your own healing. I just have techniques that you and your body and your system access that so, I have a so question i'm very clear you. about that but um i i have both those skills okay. writing how could and, you combine those skills in your marketing right and then you said you get clients from referrals from other clients how do you get your initial client well Here in Florida, that really hasn't happened much. <laughs> okay, how did you get your initial first client? Um, oh, wow. The one that's okay. the advocate. We're talking 1989 when I had my first massage client. So I, I, I'm, I can't quite remember how, I think I just, talked about it and told some people that I was doing massage and back yes, then yeah. anybody could do it. You didn't have to be licensed, nothing in Illinois. So, you know, I just yeah. told somebody and they said, oh, well, let me try it. And then they told somebody and so I think I- So how many people are I, you telling today? Um, I, I haven't really, I haven't really talked about it that much. I okay. started when I had a location that I was doing my work in. I started talking, it was a, a hair salon. So I started talking to some of the people at the salon. Um, and I had just, I had just solidified and decorated that space. And then we had to lock down. And okay. um, so before that, no. I was doing you know, for like for two years, I worked for the uh, business incubator. Mm -hmm. Joan, there's more feedback. And that was what you. I was doing. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Dick wants to say something to you. Is, is this Ray K? No. No. What is this that you do? It does it have a name? Uh, well, yes. Um, it's so medical, chi is. medical yes. Qigong. Okay. Medical Qigong, but I have, I have a background in so many, in, in several Joan, different one, techniques. Joan, Joan, slow down and listen for a while. Pick one and say, this is what I do, you know, and this is what it does. And the other big question I would have for you is, how big is your email list? Um, 
I I don't I don't know. <laughs> My uh, email list isn't just it's not business. You know, I don't have a separate business email list. Okay. Yeah. This is the way people are finding out about people in today's world. First of all, you have to have a title of what you do, and and and, and then you can tell people or write about what you do. LinkedIn is a great place to go and mine and find other people who either are doing what you're doing or could use your service. Okay. Facebook is another place, but both of those you have to mine and you have to take and look for and ask for their email. So you can then send them that monthly newsletter or opportunity. So people, you know, if this doesn't have to be hands-on, you don't have to be right there in their backyard, you don't have to be right there touching them. You, mining these other opportunities gets your name out. Right. May I jump in there? Joan, would you like to have a couple of simple action steps that there you, you can take today to get started? Would you like that, Joan? Yeah, I think I already have them from people too. I mean, the, the first okay. thing would be to get my my email list, but I have, no, I have no, a lot of no, 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 stop, stop, stop. That would not be the first thing. The okay. first thing is to sit down this afternoon and think about how, I think I've heard you talk about two or maybe three things. So list on a piece of paper, the three things you do, each one of them in one sentence. So there's gonna be three sentences, that's a total. Okay, no more than that. And bring that back next week and then we can help shape that into a marketing message for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I think I have some of these, I think I have this, you know, I have a lot of materials that I've created over the years. So well, yeah. get it on paper in three sentences, no more. We all do many different things, okay? Like Evelyn, I do many different things. Like you, I do many different things. But you have to be kind of specific when you put that message out. And then you can list those other things underneath there. But you've got to have that one thing that's going to catch and hook. And, you know, newsletters, monthly opportunities, uh, sending out free information, all that kind of stuff's good. But you if you, here, here I'll tell you, if you're not being seen and heard, you're not being seen and heard. No, I I'm know sorry. that. I wrote you, it you years ago and it's still No, I, I'm aware of that. And <laughs> part of that has been by choice. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. So are you now wanting to make a different choice? I'm sorry. What was that, Michael? Do you want to make a different choice now? Um, yes, I, I do. Um, What's the I, but? I've had, you know, I've just, I've had so many things going on in my personal life that demanded immediate attention that that, that's part of why I haven't. I've had to prioritize and those things had yes. to be priority. Yes. So, right. And that um, makes sense. But for the future, is getting these businesses started something that you want to do? I need to think about that most specifically and, um, and have an answer for you. Uh, it, it's, it's yes and it's no. <laughs> it's both. If I'm going to work, these are the things that I love doing, and, that's and that I'm we're stuck. and that I'm most effective at. Um, I'm I don't have a lot of energy to spend as many hours as I know it may take to create. Uh, that. So, Joan, it's not just energy. What I think you also have is what's called an inner conflict. Yep. You want two things and they're conflicting. Yep. And there is ways to combine those so that you can see the benefit and get the results of both. You can have both. Yeah. 
And, and you know, just because it's you're good at it, you know how to do it, doesn't mean it's your passion. I'm gonna tell you that up front. Okay. Right. Right. I and, I, and agree. Mean, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Just, this just is... because you 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 you, you it, it doesn't mean you can make money at. It. And that's what Paul is trying to get you to look at. It's what, what really drives your ship? You know, even though you've had these other things happen in your life, there's, there's, if, if, if this really truly was your passion, what was driving you, it would still be there. In other words, your visions most time in most people, once they figure out what their vision is, does not change. Their mission, how they do it, it doesn't change. The strategy changes because life happens. But those first two things, they stay socked in. But they're hard to come up with. And it's it is a tough journey. And I won't lie to you, it is. Yeah. Well, I I can tell you that I have struggled with trying to really be clear about what my passion is. Okay. most of my life and I haven't been able to um, to find that I've got a lot of things that I enjoy and that I can do well um, or There's, moderately well and I I haven't been able to do what's that. the common thread of those things Joan and what is the emotional what's the emotional connection what how does that make you feel when you do those things that that's what your passion is okay yep. it's just doing those things that give you that emotional fulfillment that you're looking for you know folks uh, that, that i'm i'm clear about i i really enjoy helping people um discover things about themselves and um and make make shifts that are significant mm -hmm. So separate from the three sentences that you're going to write down, make a list of 10 things you like to do, you enjoy doing. Make another list of all things you never want to do again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> folks, folks I, 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 I'm Joan, could you pick somebody here that maybe could help you think through all of these things? Call me. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed that. Pick somebody. If there's somebody here <laughs> that could help you think through all the ideas that are being offered you. Um, sure, I, it depends on, you know, yes, I, I could. Well, and uh, I, I just, I'm not sure who, who you're thinking so I'm not thinking I, I, I'm asking okay. you who you think could be of help to you and then ask them to help you out right not now in, 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 you know but some okay. other time okay so who might actually, be actually I was uh, Dean Dino has talked about helping people identify the steps that they need to go through and and previously and so um, once I got through a couple of things that I'm trying to complete um, personally my next step was to contact him and ask him to help me lay these Good. things out Good. that that was my my plan actually okay. so I didn't you... I actually I didn't expect to even bring this all up today that's okay that's okay but well, when will you contact Dino um, I'm not sure. Probably right would here. be. A, Send me an email. Couple, couple, probably would be a, a a couple of weeks before I could do that. Okay. So, can we count on you to do that? <laughs> I yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, good enough. Super. We got 15 minutes left. Who's next? Well, um, 
I don't know. I guess Dick pretty much covered my problem. Okay. Um, uh, Renee but, said that she had something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I just wanted, so um, with my husband and I buying this uh, business, um, we have an accepted offer and it's a food truck business and we're really excited about it. Um, so my issue is going to be finding a place close to our house that has warehouse space that we are able to store. We have three trailers so that we're able to store the three trailers in and have it hopefully temperature controlled. It must have water and it must have electricity. So if everybody can just keep their ear to the ground with regard to that, and if you hear of any space that's even looking to co-share, I know Dino brought up that uh, uh, clients of his used to co-share a warehouse space um, with someone else and they would be willing to, to co-share with us potentially. However, they're all the way up in Newport Ritchie and we're just not gonna be able logistically it wouldn't work for us unfortunately because they're so far away so we're looking for something close by Dunedin Palm Harbor area Clearwater North Clearwater where we can we can find that space to house our trailers um, that we're gonna need that space to do because we'll have to cook we have a commissary kitchen in one of the trailers and we're going to cook from the commissary kitchen. We're unsure yet if we're going to, I have to check with my HOA to see if we can keep that at the house along with the refrigerated trailer where all of our product is kept. Um, or if we can't do that, then we have to have, yeah. either way we're going to need a location, right? Somewhere um, to put that product or to put the trailers. So if everybody could keep their ear to the ground, that would be, really great i would really appreciate that right that's so you need for us. need indoor space yes it, if it if it could be something where we could pull in yes and, and evelyn and, yeah i just would betty capo possibly being that she's in real estate might have some some leads in that area i would reach out to betty and ask I would her do if that. she has yeah I'm trying to think of any other realtors that are in our group, but Betty definitely is usually is on, Betty, on with us. Is Betty commercial? Yes. She does commercial, yes, and investor-related stuff, so yeah. Yeah. Renee, yeah. I'm curious, where did the previous owner store their equipment? They have, they are in a um, non-HOA uh, and they have a, a acre of land. So yeah. they can store it right at their house. And we don't have that luxury. We live right off of Republic Drive in between 19 and Belcher. <laughs> so it's a, it's kind of a busier road. And so we really, we, great advertising. So it would be good advertising for us, but we, we really need some place where, especially if a hurricane hits, you know, that we're going to be able to protect our equipment. Um, um, and two other, oh, sorry, go ahead, Kathy. I was just going to add, you mentioned wanting to have cold storage. Is this for driving the trucks into the cold storage or cold storage accessible? Because if you want to drive it in there, I don't know if that's the best use of that space because it'll be super, super yeah. expensive. We um, already have cold storage. It would just be the trailers needing to pull into like a, a warehouse type area and um, be able to, that we would be able to store the trucks. We already have the cold storage. Now, if they have potential to be a commissary kitchen in addition to, mm. that would be oh yeah fantastic <laughs> because that would really, looking in the future and what we want to do, that would help us immediately with growth opportunity. But really what we would be doing is looking to pull in and and store the trailers because the trail one of the there's three trailers total one of the trailers already has the cold storage define a trailer please um a food truck so like a food how trailer how many how big oh how big Ooh. um i don't know the size uh, of a minivan the size of a pickup truck the size of a U-Haul trailer. The size of a U-Haul. The commissary kitchen is is the size of a U-Haul. It's a two axle, uh -huh. and then the other truck is a little bit smaller. 
And then the, the, the refrigerated trailer is, is about that size as well. Okay. All right, so, so a large three car garage with electricity and, and water. Yes, like if somebody wants to, if somebody wanted to loan us, rent us their garage, like however that looks, but it would need to have water and it would need to have power. So Renee, um, my husband happens to be in the food industry and he sells to food trucks and oh, all cool. those kind of things. Um, and like, I don't know if you know we're in Palm Harbor where Divine is, the brewery, yes. right yep. next to it, they've leased out physical space to their food truck or to a food truck. I think it's a yeah. barbecue place. Yep. So, I'm curious of why you think they have to be stored inside a building versus having a location like it was in the acre where the original owner had. We could do that, but I still have to have water and yep. power. So well, as long as it has water and power, I'm just more trying to protect it from the elements, but it doesn't have to be inside, it can be out. But the trailers, oh, go ahead. Maybe, maybe even talk to the owner of that food truck that is in at Divine mm -hmm. because they've worked out water and and uh, electric with Divine and so it's just a matter of you know creatively thinking and asking and searching but my I can put you in touch with my husband's work although I don't know if he'll know all the places but uh, and I'll ask him first before I just offer his his brain yeah but yeah um, I think it's, I, I think it's, I think it's good to know that we're not going to be stationary. We're not stationary. We travel. The, the, we're buying it from people that are currently, the, the majority of their business right now is in North Tampa. So we're going to continue to have that business in North Tampa, but we got to trail, we've got to trailer the trucks. So uh, we've got to, we have, we have to truck, we have to trailer. Don't oh, worry, yeah. I was going to. I was going to say this, the same thing that, that Kathy is recommending, um, but I was going to ask if you've been looking at any of the local breweries, because I, I think a lot of them don't offer food services. Yes. And, you know, House of Beer has, you know, the waffle, ramen waffles or whatever. So it's the same concept. Um, right. The difference, so is, the difference is, is we're going to be traveling. So North Pinellas is already covered. We will be expanding into this area. Gotcha. And it is a food truck that does um, the festivals in this area. Like, okay. Like, so, yeah. So David? that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So if anybody hears of a space, that would be great. I would appreciate that. Thank you. David, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I wanted to jump in for just a moment. This may be a bad idea, but consider <clears throat> talking to the former owners of the Dunedin uh, brewery and they moved into a warehouse district and are, are setting up kind of an experimental beer practice there and it looks like there's space in the back where there could be parking now in terms of water electricity I don't know about that but as far as I know there's no food trucks there Cotherman's distillery which is right behind the house of beer and the, the warehouse that they have has a food truck that has worked out an arrangement and he's parking right there next to Cotherman's. I doubt that there's room for two trucks there, but you could still possibly talk to him and say, what about it? Because he's still trying to develop his business to the point where he's going to be selling his first batch of whiskey and it's got another year or two to age before he can do that. Sure, uh, sure. And, and it sounds like Evelyn has almost too much business and, and the idea of getting organized, whatever system you use, you know, if you're organizing a file, you can organize it by date, you can organize it by name, you can organize it by subject matter, just have something that's you're consistent with. And eventually you can hire somebody to change it for you or change it yourself. But it's like anything else. I, I once asked a woman, you know, my bedroom's a mess. How do I clean it? She says, start anywhere, pick up a sock, whatever it takes, <laughs> just get started. And they say that in terms of business too. You got to make your first sale and then you know you're in business. So just, yeah, thank you. I, I do have starts. Um, it's just a matter of <laughs> consolidating them when I'm all, all over the place physically. Um, and that's all. Yeah. 
but I got you. Thank you. Oh, but but Dino had the right idea. If you if oh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll look into that system course for sure. That's a good workable system, and then organize around that. Um, you can always change it later. That's not the problem. Um, okay, I've got a new business, but I don't want to start talking about it now. I want to talk about it maybe next time around. Okay. Uh, and uh, Kathy, you ask excellent questions. You were opening up the thinking there. It was, it was very good. Uh, I, I, I love it when people contribute like that. And it's not that, that uh, Michael wasn't asking some good questions and making some good comments too. And of course, you always have something to bring to the table, so that's great. But, but it's been a pleasure being with you this morning. And hopefully, this is going to happen more often. I've been, shall we say, under the weather quite a bit yeah. lately, mm -hmm. and I'm just getting back on my feet. And uh, this is like the first step in this direction, which is good. Very it's good, good to see you back. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to. Go. I, did, I want to thank everybody for all your input and your interest in trying to uh, help me work my way through this. I appreciate it. I do. Welcome. Anything else, folks? This is a good time to wrap it up until next, next week. And next week we have a presentation of. Oh, that would be me. Yes, it would. Okay. Yeah, I I have done my little presentation on hurricane prep your tech. Um, and I'm hoping to pull in some, if I have the time to do so, some new fresh ideas to that presentation. I've done it uh, last couple of years, but it's always been right prior to a hurricane so nobody ever shows up. So um, hopefully <laughs> we won't have a hurricane before I present. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>